What's going on, Dark Avenger Nation, and welcome back to another episode of the Dark Avenger Comic Book Review, the show where each and every episode I share my thoughts on books I read in the previous week. Except there really weren't that many books last week. <laughs> but uh, there were some digital books, so I actually was wrong last week. I never looked at the digital lists for Marvel and DC, so there actually were more books than I thought, but not really. We only have six books to talk about for this episode, everyone, and these books were released on July 1st, 2020, the first week of July. Boy, oh boy, I can't wait for Marvel and DC to get back to that regularly shipping schedule so we don't have weeks like this. So, first three books are all digital-only books, and then the last three books are physical and digital books. So, let's get into the digital-only books First, shall we? First up, we have Spider-Man Black Cat Strikes, Issue 5, the final issue. Again, if you play the DLC for the Spider-Man PS4 game, you know this story already. They do add in a little bit, little extras to the story. The artwork is gorgeous. And you got the final fight between Hammerhead and Spider-Man, the final confrontation between Black Cat and Spider-Man, Mary Jane and Spider-Man's relationship in the PS4 universe getting ever so stronger and I loved it. I really truly enjoyed this mini. I really wish they'd do something beyond what was in the game already. They did do it once with Velocity. I would love to see more Spider-Man in the Marvel gaming universe. We're getting Spider-Man right now. We should be getting back to Avengers uh, to set up for the PS4 slash 5 Avengers game. Yes, they moved it to the PS5 as well now. So I would love to see more from the gaming verse uh, or the game verse as they call it at some point, uh, especially with now the announcement of the new Spider-Man game for the PS5. Love to see the transition and what happened to Pete if something happened to Pete or if we're just focusing on Miles. It still would be really cool to get more. So Marvel, we'd love to have more from these. Uh, at least I would. I shouldn't speak for the entire world. I would love to have more. Spider-Man from the game verse. This is an excellent miniseries. If you didn't check it out, buy the pay trade paperback when it comes out. I guarantee you, you will not regret it. Star, issue number five. Man, I'm just so upset that this moved to a digital-only book. I literally, during the months that we had no new books, I bought issues one through three, hoping to get issues, you know, to, to finish this mini off. And uh, I'm just upset that this is a digital-only book. But it was a great conclusion. So Star ends up giving the... I forget what they who they were called. But she ends up giving them what they want. Of course, she goes into hiding after everything that's gone on. Using the Reality Stone, she goes into hiding. And now she's kind of blending in with the people. She's using the Reality Stone to change the way she looks. Will we be seeing more of Star in the future? I hope so. I hope that we do get more of Star. I feel like they really set something up big with Cap in the Captain Marvel book with Star. And this miniseries was very strong. It just it went by so quick, honestly. And honestly, I don't even remember what happened in issue issue four. Is I'm drawing a blank, and I'm trying to remember exactly what happened with issue four. This was a really good miniseries. I would love to see more of Star in the future. Maybe we will. Maybe the next event. Maybe in Captain Marvel down the line in another storyline. Uh, but she has a reality stone, so I'm sure at some point we are going to be seeing more of Star anyway in the Marvel Universe. Really great issue. Great miniseries. Again, just like with Spider-Man The Black Cat Strikes, definitely recommend you check this out and trade. This is my favorite digital-only book of the week. And that's Deceased Hope at World's End, issue number four. Again, this is filling in the blanks from the very first volume. And next week, next week, volume two begins for Deceased. And this is years later in Deceased. So this issue, we got to see a little bit of Blink and her girlfriend. We got to see a little bit of Damien dealing with the aftermath of Bruce dying. And now Damien is the next Batman. And I love the dialogue between Damien and John, and especially between Damien and Superman, because Superman is the one that kind of explained to Damien about being the next Batman and what it means, and Damien being upset because he knows putting the cowl on means his father truly is gone. It was so strong. Honestly, that's what shined for me in this digital book, was that. It really shined the most. This was Damien's transition from Robin 
to Batman. And I've already seen sneak peeks of the cover to issue number five. And it's got Damien and John on the cover. I'm really excited to read that. Again, Deceased has been an amazing version of DC Zombies, so to speak. And I definitely recommend it. If you haven't read any Deceased yet, there are trades. There are these digital-only books. There's the segue. And we have Volume 2 coming out next week. It's my number one most anticipated book coming out from next week. Definitely something you should check out. Tom Taylor is doing an amazing job with Deceased. If you enjoyed Injustice, this is yet again another Elseworld tale that you don't want to miss out on. Up next, a book that came out both digitally and physically, Ghostbusters Year One Issue Number 4. This time around, the focus is on Egon. Egon is the last one to be interviewed by this reporter, and we get to see what the uh, firehouse looks like, or looked like, after the end of the first movie and it's destroyed and we have police officers staying outside now making sure there are no looters but Egon is still in there he still works in there I believe he still lives in there which is crazy enough I love the story that we got with Egon we got a backstory with Slimer who escaped the prison that was under the firehouse and it was just great and I love how Peter Bankman tried to trick the reporter into asking him about a specific thing and then Winston before she went for the interview told her not to ask that question because if she did she was going to get a two hour lecture so I, I find it funny that Peter still tried to mess with this reporter and again at the very beginning of the book she talked to several people about Egon before she got the interview with Egon now this was the part that I got very let down with the ghost that's been following the reporter around for the entire miniseries it ended up building up only for a one page spread where the ghost possessed the reporter and basically warned Egon that doom is still coming and the end of the world is coming very soon and there's nothing here the Ghostbusters can do about it and that's it that's all we got to see of that ghost which let me down a little bit because again it was building up so much, I thought we'd get a little bit more in this issue. Unfortunately, we didn't. But it does possibly solidify my hypothesis that we are going to be getting another Ghostbusters miniseries that follows directly after Year One, or maybe even later on. Because again, Year One is the first Ghostbusters that actually put itself within the timeline of Ghostbusters 1 and Ghostbusters 2. So, what I always predicted or, or figured was the Ghostbusters ongoing series which then became a mini took place after Ghostbusters 2. Year 1 took place right after Ghostbusters 1. When we get the next mini series, will that also be before Ghostbusters 2 or will that take place years later in present day like the other Ghostbusters mini series were originally? I just I, I don't know, speculation, but I'm hoping we get another Ghostbusters mini soon. Love the artwork in the book. Love the story. Love how the reporter is basically like, this is not, no, I'm, I am I didn't get paid enough for this gig. I did this because it paid well. I'm done. And she just walks out and that's the end. And you have Peter Venkman talking with Egon for like a panel saying, so what's up? And he told him about the possession. He said, something's up, but I promise you, Peter, I'm going to figure it out. And that's what made me believe that we're going to get another miniseries. I'm keeping my fingers crossed about that. But we'll see. But this was an excellent, excellent year one book. Get this trade paperback again another book that's over now get this trade if you're a ghostbuster fan if you enjoy ghostbusters from idw this is definitely a story you do not want to miss out on next up we have jim henson's the storyteller ghost issue number three i'm one of the only people that read this book in my friend circle i enjoy it each and every time it comes out it's every time a new tale this time around there's a storm that's going on outside which wakes the dog up which still can talk and i Again, it's Jim Henson's world, so it doesn't really surprise me. And so the man tells him a story. A story about a boy who every time he hears the whistle of the storm or of the wind, it tells him of someone else who dies and several people in his family die. And what really grabbed me in this book specifically was towards the end where it told him his father was going to die. And... He goes outside and he actually sees a ghost of his father who didn't go towards heaven. He came back because he felt a need to be with his son. He's like, I saw your mother, but I, 
I wanted to come, you know, I let her go to come see you. And he's like, no, dad, go with mom. And you see him turn and you see the mother. And all of a sudden he was in an accident. So he didn't exactly look great. But when he turned back to go, he became whole again. And it, it was that moment where the boy's like, I love you, dad. And, and it, I don't know, for me, I guess it's just because of the year I've had. And, and just because of losing my dad at the beginning of the year. Uh, the end of this book just hit me. It just really hit me. And it, again, great story. I've been enjoying this series, this mini series. Each book is a different story. So it doesn't matter where you jump in. I would recommend reading all four. There's one more issue to go. Each issue is a different story. So again, let's say you're not interested in the first story. There's still the second and third story. This story has been my favorite out of the three that I've read so far. Still one more to go. So I don't know about the fourth one. Have to wait and see when the fourth one comes out. But this has been an excellent, excellent series from Jim Henson, the Jim Henson comics line. Finally this week from AWA, Devil's Highway issue number one. I love this book. This book is competing for a top five spot in my AWA books. So this girl ends up showing up at this diner. And this guy is following after her. And... The diner, the man who owns the diner, makes her run and he tries to stop the guy. Unfortunately, he ends up dying. At the same time, his daughter now wants to know who the killer was because the killer got away. So she does her own investigating in the diner and all over and she goes and finds um, a recorder where uh, there was the place across the street from the diner where there was this trucker guy and that's where the girl came from. And it turns out her father, after there was he was killed, there was a, a, a like a branding on him. And she started doing all this really interesting detective work. But now you have this other guy, the guy that actually did the branding, that, that went after the girl, that was going after the girl, that's done, obviously, m multiple murders. You had him go after the guy who had the, the video camera and delete all this stuff. So he's deleting all of his... Um, so that nobody knows where he was. He's deleting all the evidence. Who is this guy? We don't know. I'm, I love it. I love a good mystery book, and that's exactly what this is building up to. But what does the symbol mean? So she goes and looks up what the symbol means. I'm not going to spoil that. And we find the girl that he was chasing after at the beginning of the issue, I believe. I believe it was that girl. And she's missing a few things, and they don't know. And they can't identify her now. They can't identify who the girl is, and they can't identify who killed her. And then that symbol that was branded on her chest as well... Well, let's just say what that symbol is, is a snake. That's all I'm going to say. And at the very end of the issue, a snake comes out of her somewhere. This is not a book for kids. Definitely not a book for kids. Mature readers only. But yes. Oh, I love a good mystery. And I want to see if the diner owner's daughter actually is able to find this guy. Who this guy is, I'm actually very curious about too. We don't get to see his face. He's very silhouetted. Uh, very, very little do you get to see of him. Who is he? Why did he have that woman? What's with the branding? Who? What? What is it? I, there's so many questions. I can't even get all of them out right now. I'm excited to see where Devil's Highway goes. This was an excellent read. Read this book. Loved it. The artwork fit this book. I, just, I really enjoyed it. This book definitely is contesting for a top five spot in my AWA books. I can't wait to read more. I truly cannot wait to read more of Devil's Highway. Definitely check out issue one. It is out right now. And with that, that's it for this week's books, everyone. We only had six books this week. It was a really good week. Just after reading 19 books in the previous week and going to six books this week. Yeah, that was, that was, that was a major, big jump, big jump down next week we have more books though so look forward to that really quick there is no frontline live this tuesday however we will have dark avenger live on friday so look forward to that top five comic covers will be back this week and most anticipated also will be back we're going to be bringing it back to the regular schedule most anticipated and then top five covers will be on the weekend look forward to everything coming out of this channel and Keep an eye on other channels that I'm working on. There are a few really interesting, fun videos coming there as well. Follow me across social media and you'll figure out and find out where all that stuff is. So with that being said, I hope you all are having a wonderful week. I hope you all had a wonderful 4th of July celebration. But 
But the end of the video always comes the outro. Hey, did you enjoy that video? If you're new, consider clicking that subscribe button for more. Also, click that notification bell to be notified when live streams and videos are posted. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Come over to Facebook.com and join the Dark Avenger Nation to continue the conversation beyond YouTube. Don't forget to check out my website, ShootingStarUniverse.com, for all the content I do across the web. And for anything else, check the links in the description below. And as always, take care, keep reading, keep collecting, and I'll see you really soon in the next one.